today is all about filter and EQ hardware effects pedals for synths. So sit back and relax. Today we have a lot to go through. Let's get into it. Having an EQ pedal is something that I think is underrated. It doesn't ever seem to be like the first pedal that people reach for, but it could have a huge impact on the sound of your synths or your tracks in the studio or in a live setting as well, especially if there's other members or instruments within your mix. Yes, many instruments and especially synths already have their own built-in EQ. But in terms of hardware effects pedals, the more different effects that you add, the more you're gonna eventually need some sort of EQ somewhere on your chain. Having an EQ at the end or maybe even in the middle of your effects chain is a great way to polish your parts. It's useful to every artist, so whether you're performing live, producing, or even sampling or doing some sort of sound design. There's a lot of information in this video, so if you'd like to jump to something specific, I invite you to check out the description. And this video is sponsored by DistroKit. They are a music distribution platform, the best way to officially release your music to major streaming platforms, super affordable. And there's a new addition that they actually just recently added with the DistroKid phone app. And so that's what we're gonna be getting into later in this video. There's also affiliate links for all of the gear listed in this video. So lots of affiliate links, obviously. If you are in North America, use Sweetwater. They are pretty much the biggest distributor in North America. They have everything that you need. And before getting into any of these pedals, I'm gonna give you an intro into what a filter actually is, what it, what it does. And this is assuming that we all know that an EQ or equalizer is just a bunch of frequency filters configured in one way or another. Filters are definitely one of the most important and prominent synth parameters. So you could go from a sound like this with a completely open filter to something like this. The difference that you're hearing in this tone is huge. All I'm doing is simply pulling down the higher frequencies and you can sort of hear that in the sound. It sounds a bit more underwater, whereas here it's just a lot more open. Personally, I usually go for this sort of tone. And if I was to sculpt this here with ADSR, this is more my thing. If I go back up to this brighter tone, this tone definitely does have its place, but I find that it's something that you have to sort of sculpt into your mix. Hence, having an EQ pedal, that's where it's very helpful. But especially if you're working with bass, Having a cutoff is very important. And what we did here, just sweeping out all of the high frequencies, this is called a low pass, which means that the low frequencies are passing through. I could of course do the exact same thing with any of these EQ pedals. So let's say the Boss EQ 200, turn that on. And so let's do the opposite of what we just did on the base station standalone. I'm gonna cut out all of these low frequencies and now I can barely hear it unless I turn up the high frequencies. So that doesn't sound like a bass anymore. What I'm doing here could be considered a high pass because now I'm only letting the higher frequencies pass through. There's also what's called a band pass, which isolates a very specific uh, band of frequency within the spectrum. And this brings us to our next point, cues, which is another thing that's very accessible on the para EQ. So you could think of a cue sort of like a band pass in a way. It's just how specific is that band pass, like how pointed is the band pass going to be. So let's say here, it's a much thicker, so it's a more general cue. And then if I turn it this way, it's a lot more specific. We'll do the same thing we just did before, but on the higher frequencies, I'm also going to open up this uh, filter here. So we're gonna hear everything very clearly. And we're starting with a, a much more broad cue. Let's hear it. Okay, and then the most specific cue on Right, so it's very subtle, but this one definitely feels a bit more pointed uh, and it just gives you that extra control to, again, polish your parts. And then there's resonance. We'll go back to the base station to demonstrate this because we have our resonance right here, standalone. Think of resonance as an EQ boost where the cutoff is happening. It's actually kind of similar to a band pass in that way, except it's moving along with the, the cutoff, whether it's a, a, a high pass or a low pass. You're gonna hear a big difference here. So I'm at halfway with my cutoff here, low pass. So that's without any resonance. I'm going to boost that resonance a bunch. Right, so we get that very synthy sound. And if I really boost the resonance, you gotta be careful with that because you could actually hurt your ears if there's too much resonance. And if we go down even to the low, 
you want tons of low end, right? So now I just have, uh, I'm basically cutting off all of the higher frequencies and really boosting the resonance in the low end. Now that we have a basic idea of what a filter is, what it does, we could look into this effects chain here. These are all either EQ or filter pedals. All of the pedals here are being powered by the Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 3. This is the most efficient way of doing it. It's super clean. Also in terms of cable management and just like overall organization and stability, this is the Pedal Train XD18, super professional, absolutely solid. You can organize your cables underneath, which is great. And one last little pro tip here, because there's so many wires happening in this little area, I decided to clean that up. I don't know what you call this, but it's like a gardening rubber wire. <laughs> and it does a great job at organizing these cables in this little area here. Because I have OCD. Let's start with Earthquaker Devices Spatial Delivery. I think this is the oldest dog in the comparison. It's also a very simple and straightforward pedal. Maybe that's what you're looking for. It's less of an EQ pedal, more of a filter pedal. You might also argue that it's the most guitar-y sounding pedal in the bunch. This is a voltage controlled envelope filter with some really interesting capabilities. There's three different types of modes on this thing. So there's an up sweep, down sweep, as well as sample hold mode. Sample and hold mode sort of randomizes the voltage and filter, which gives a really interesting effect. We're gonna look at that in just a bit. When you're up sweep or down sweep mode, you have these on the surface uh, parameters or controls right here. Let's turn this on. So range controls the sensitivity of the sweep. And so as you can see, as I turn it right, it sort of widens the range of that sweep. Right, so as for the filter, this is high pass, low pass, and then the range will uh, react accordingly to that. What if I did the same thing with down sweep? Get a low pass going instead. Cool. As for the sample and hold setting, it sort of gives you these different rhythms. And so range changes the speed of that rhythm. The only thing is that there's no MIDI sync, so using this with the synth, it is a little bit difficult to sync it perfectly to tempo but it's still a really interesting effect to add. And if we tamper with high pass versus low pass, so go back into low pass mode. Back to high pass. And let's really speed this up. I love simple pedals like this. So if you're looking for a very specific sort of filter, guitar-y sounding filter, this could be the right pedal for you. The next pedal we're gonna take a look at is the Dreadbox Kinematic. Right off the bat, great for synth users. Up top is where you could go modular if you'd like. CV input for the filter, CV input for the level, CV output for the envelope generator. It's a really simple pedal, so depending on where this switch is, it's either an envelope filter or a boost of frequency. Envelope filter is where it's a low pass. Let's turn this on here with the groove. It sounds really good on drums. And comp color is where it becomes a frequency booster. Also sounds great on drums. As you can see, we've got drive here as well, of course. The amount of envelope that you want to use, but again, this parameter here actually changes uh, depending on which setting you have here. With envelope filter, it's an envelope of the input signal coming in. On comp color, it becomes the ratio of the compression. And of course, you've got level here as well, which will keep moderate for now. Let's keep running through this groove and see what this gives us. Again, I love it down here when just bringing the filter down, just the way it reacts to the drums. Like those hi-hats, the high end becomes so 
synthy. That's where I'm at. Off, on. So it just completely changes up the character of those drums. I love it. And the standout for me here is just the quality of the sound. You're working with 100% analog circuits. So that's evident in the sound, especially on drums. Old blood noise endeavors float. The first standard of this pedal, of course, is that it's got dual filters, so left as well as right. Because of the complexity that you have with it, the only thing, again, is that there's no MIDI sync, so you can't tempo sync to it. It essentially gives you two LFOs, so one on each side here. As you can see, you could choose the shape of your LFO. In terms of the rest of your controls, what you see is what you get. Everything is right there in front of you for both sides. You have identical controls on both sides. So no need for any sort of menu diving here, which I think is a huge plus. You've got volume control on both sides. You've got sensitivity, which is something we haven't seen yet. So what is that? I'll turn the rates down to zero. So there's no LFO happening here. It's sort of reacting to each note, or I should say each transient. And it's very sensitive, so as I turn it up even just a little bit, it'll change the whole flavor of the filter. So this is a new addition that we haven't seen here yet that will kind of give your music a mind of its own, whether you're playing uh, live notes, it'll react to each note, or if you're playing a sequence like I am. Moving along with the rest of the pedals, so we've got resonance per side. If you want it to be really resonant. There's also uh, an LFO setting, which we have we don't have that selected yet, so we could actually change the rate of the LFO. Again, we've got the shape of the LFO as well. Square, random. Kind of like it random. Uh, we're currently synced, by the way, if we want to unsync these two change the rate, let's say, of just this one. And of course, we could change between... I'm actually going to sync this back up. We could change between high pass, band pass. Wow. As well as low pass, which is where we were before. Let's do low pass on left, high pass on right. So again, just to be clear, when I turn this back down, the rate is gone, the LFO is not activated. When I turn it back up, this is when it turns into an auto filter. I find at this point that these are really intense uh, filters, like they cover a really huge spectrum. So if you wanna change the, uh, the size of that spectrum to make these a little bit more subtle, which is definitely what I wanna do right now, you could do that. So min, Let's set that to here. Right, so it's not such an intense sweep. And if you want to go really subtle... Something like that. Right, so put this through a reverb pedal and that could be really interesting. So that is the idea of this pedal. That's the idea of float. I think we've had enough fun with it. Let's move on to the next one. Empress Para EQ Deluxe Mark II. Going back to the idea of EQ pedals being an underrated tool for anyone's effects chain. This is where the Para EQ comes into play really nicely just because of the amount of precision that you have with this pedal. The thing I like most about this EQ pedal in this comparison compared to like these beasts, which give you such a clear visual of what's going on. Sometimes it actually disservices you to rely on a visual. The Para EQ forces you to use your ears, which I think is a good thing. Here is the layout of the pedal from top to bottom. We've got our cue here, so more a fatter cue or a much more precise surgical cue. We have our low frequency from 35 to 500. We could boost that or reduce that from 15 to minus 15 dB. Same thing for mids, so 250 to 5K, and then 1K to 20K. So there is a little bit of crossover uh, 
between these three bands here. On this fourth row down here, we've got some other EQ moves as well. And then we've just got a big old boost on the bottom here, which is great if you wanna boost your entire signal. So like any good EQ pedal, you've just got a bunch of layers to work with here. Like the Dreadbox Cinematic, obviously a much different pedal, but you're working with 100% analog circuits with the Para EQ Mark II. Let's see what we could do with that bass. So low frequencies, let's say 35. I'm just gonna sweep here and find something that I like. Mids. High frequency, do I want high frequency here? So without, with, right? So that just breathes a lot of life into this. So obviously when we throw the drums in here, it's not gonna sound great because we're just adding an entirely new element. So you know what, let's restart this for a second. And this time we're gonna lo-fi up this. So we're gonna basically just close up the frequency spectrum, give it some more mids. And drums are actually a great thing to EQ because it gives you the entire spectrum, right? So let's say I wanted to open up the high end and I wanted to focus specifically on those hi-hats. I find they're pretty loud in this mix. So let's find the frequency where they're Maybe around here it's kind of harsh. Pull those, pull that down. Right, so now those hi-hats are a lot more subtle. I would argue that this is the most production, maybe used for sampling or sound design pedal in this example because you can't save anything. Everything is on the fly. Again, like float, everything is just right there on the surface. There's no screen. And if you choose a high quality pedal like Parrot EQ, you're gonna find your ears just getting a lot sharper because you're gonna be relying on them a lot more. The only thing about Parrot EQ that you need to know is that it's mono in, mono out. So if you wanted a stereo signal with the same quality, you'd have to buy two of these. And I've actually seen many people commit to that, but it's something that you should definitely know going into it. GFI System Enigma. This is the newest pedal in this comparison and it's an absolute beast. And it might actually be the most powerful EQ pedal in existence right now, so something to take note of. <laughs> it's an equalizer and expander and the first pro is just the amount of control that you have with this thing. Also, contrary to Para EQ, if you want a visual, this is the best visual that you're gonna get in an EQ effects pedal. On top of that, it's got tons of memory for presets that you could very quickly jump to. We don't have that sort of power and control with any other pedals here. So I'm really talking it up, but what is the possible criticism that comes along with something that's this small that has that much power? Well, if menu diving isn't your thing, then this might actually not be the best fit for you. So if I turn the pedal on and I just hit the encoder right here, I'm prompted with a bunch of information. If I get out of this menu, same thing, I'm actually gonna hold the encoder this time, and what do you know, I have a bunch of other settings. So these are the global settings. You can change your in-out settings. So mono in, stereo out, dual mono, stereo in, mono out. If you'd like in dual mono, you could go through the pedal, do some EQing there, go mono out into a bunch of other effects pedals and go mono back into this to EQ it again. We'll see this sort of clever audio routing with the Boss EQ200 as well. Going back to this page, we've got three different types of EQ. So there's Para EQ, Simple EQ, which we'll look at as well, and Poltec EQ. Poltec is an emulation of the legendary EQ uh, from the 50s. Top right is Master Volume, which we can boost or cut. If you hold down the encoder, you could also control the amount of volume coming from the clean boost as well. If I go back to this menu, I look at prototypes. This is a bunch of um, presets that I could choose from. I admit that these are very guitar-y, so this is definitely a guitar pedal, but if you'd like to jump to something uh, kind of like this. This is what all of these give us. Right, and you can see that it's jumping from Para EQ. The last one here was Poltec, which is flat. Simple EQ. Let's get that clean boost. So these are operating independently, of course, clean boost, as well as master volume. Off, on. 
Another surprise with this pedal is that this is actually a touch screen as well, so I could access each of these bands by touching. I've got control over gain or reduction, Q, as well as frequency. By default, these two bands here are high cut and low cut. So let's bring this up a bit, maybe cut a bit more of those lows if we want, then maybe head over to this next band, play a beat over top of this so we can hear what we're doing. Right, so this is the second band I want to control a bit higher, maybe around 700 hertz. Reduce that. Make that a little bit more specific with the Q. Okay, so let's head over to the third band. Bring that a bit higher. Q. See if I wanted tons of resonance on a specific point. Double tap these to erase, by the way. If you want to erase everything. If I wanted to go to a specific band, let's say the middle one here, and change the type of band that it is, I'm gonna hold down here and twist. Just because of the amount of control you have with Enigma, you might think that it's not great for a live setting. Well, that is where Simple EQ comes in. On Simple EQ, if I hold this encoder and just start scrolling, I have a bunch of presets to work with here. And so these all interact in different ways. And then within each of these settings, just with a twist of a few knobs, you have like these completely different controls. Let's switch to the next one, the next preset. Let's go bass and treble. Let's see what this does. Right, so you're getting these like broad strokes just with the twist of a few knobs. And so that gives you a basic idea of GFI system Enigma as an EQ pedal. Still a couple other pedals to get into here. There's a lot of information, as I mentioned, Source Audio EQ2, as well as Boss EQ200. Before getting into that though, let's talk about the best way of officially releasing your music to all major streaming platforms using DistroKid. In terms of what's new, they recently released a smartphone app, which makes checking your important DistroKid stats easy and accessible. The app is now available on Android through the Play Store. Essentially everything that you've been able to do on the DistroKid desktop app, you're now able to do through your smartphone. In fact, here's a list of key features that the app offers you. You might wanna pause it now if you wanna check them out. In today's day and age, we all know how many hats we have to wear as artists and producers. It can just be a lot, so write the music, produce the music. Then you've gotta create content to promote it a few weeks before it's released. Then you've gotta continue creating content after it's been released to promote it. It's a lot, and I'm not saying that DistroKid does all of this work for you, but they do make it a lot easier for us with the free promotional tools that they offer. The one I use most is Hyperfollow. It's essentially a free landing page or a link tree. It's super clean, you could link maybe your latest video, your latest single, other important links you'd like to lead people to. I also use promo cards whenever I release a single. Just select the single that you would like to promote and it'll auto-generate a few different uh, options for you to choose from. Go with DistroKid, it's just over $20 a year to release unlimited music to all major streaming platforms. You keep 100% of your streaming royalties. So many other tools that they offer for someone who's independent, they're, they're made for us. And there is a discount linked in the description of this video if you would like to join. Anyways, back to the video. The thing that's really impressive about this pedal is just the size of it. It's stereo in, stereo out. The MIDI in is really handy if you'd like to have hands-on control on a separate, maybe like a MIDI controller. It's more or less just as precise as something like the Para EQ. A little bit more menu divey though. If you press down and scroll on this encoder, you've got 10 bands to scroll through. Underneath the surface, there are parametric frequency bands which allow you to move back and forth over the frequency spectrum. I'm gonna press the encoder down on a specific band. Frequency pops up, I'm gonna hit frequency, and I could change that to something else. If I press this down again, there's also a bunch of other parameters we could work with. So there was Q factor as well. So this is like how surgical you want that Q to be. Once again, you can make it a bit fatter or much more precise. I'm also very easily able to jump from one preset to the next. And I just hold down on that preset in order to save it. I've got my gain output right here. The cool thing is that if you're in a dark room, let's say, and you boost it to the max, it turns blue. And if it's off, it's there's no lighting at all. So let's EQ a groove. Let's say uh, this one, I want more highs. Bit of the mids out. Scoop some of that out. Let's get some kick as well. And I want some punch from that kick. 
there's also a really interesting split mode where you could split up left and right and EQ them differently. So currently we're on the left audio signal. How do we get to the right one? I'm gonna scroll over past 16K. It prompts me, it says channel two. Uh, and I'm gonna EQ this one a little bit differently. So let's say for this one, I'm gonna give it even more highs, bring the lows a little bit lower. Right, so this is an option, you're able to do this. There's a whole other control or editing option with this pedal that includes using a desktop. Personally, I find that to be a little bit redundant because if you're gonna go into your desktop, you might as well just use like a software EQ. They also sound pretty good. Another thing about the EQ2 I'll mention again is just the size of the pedal versus the capability. You're getting everything you need EQ wise and it's like half the size of the Boss EQ200. And same thing with the Enigma. And speaking of the Boss EQ200, let's get into it. This has studio grade digital processing, which means very low noise. The cool thing about the Boss EQ200 is that you get dual modes. So manual mode, which is just, you know, very simply pushing these faders uh, and getting a visual of that EQ at the same time. There's also a lock mode here, which is great for a live setting in case, you know, you don't want to bump into anything and completely change your settings. So now I am locked. Like with the Source Audio EQ2, you also have a MIDI in setting where you're able to control settings here with an external MIDI controller, which is nice. Another interesting feature about this pedal is that you have several signal flow options. Mono, dual mono, stereo, and pre-post EQ for a ton of practical or musical applications. There's also three different frequency setups you can choose for more detailed sound shaping. So just like the other EQ pedals in this comparison, you've got a bunch of bands to work with. In this case, you've got 10. So much like the EQ2, I can boost up to 15 dB and reduce up to 15 dB on specific frequencies. In this example, I'm going to, let's say, cut quite a bit of the lows. So without it, you've got that kick. That kick is now pretty much gone. I really like the idea of the faders. It kind of reminds me of the TR-8S, which uh, also has faders. They're just so useful uh, in live settings like this. And again, you've got that dual world of having tons of control, but once again, if you need to be on the surface, it's right there. If I want to boost that level as well, I certainly can. This is one of my favorite parts of the pedal. Let's menu dive. I hit both of these to open up the menu. I could scroll down, this is my down, this is my up. I'm gonna scroll down to link. I'm going to unlink channel A and B, so you can see when it's linked, both of these are uh, lit up. When it's unlinked, it's just A. So just like with the EQ2, now we're able to EQ left and right separately. And so I could jump back and forth now. So A has already been EQ'd, let's go to B. If I want the same EQ, I could just budge these around a little bit so that they activate. Let's say I want this side to be, have some more low end. So you just get really um, intricate and precise. And you can get a really interesting stereo image this way. You could also get clever with audio routing with the EQ200. If you'd like to go mono out of input A into some effects pedals, back into input B. And once again, you could EQ that entire signal again. There is a lot of information in this video. I think it would help to sort of sum all of these pedals up in a few sentences. Earthquaker devices, spatial delivery. Simplest pedal in the bunch. It's an auto filter pedal more so than an EQ pedal. If you're a guitar player, you're most likely gonna like this pedal. Dreadbox, kinematic. It's a dual function as a filter and compression pedal, so not an EQ. It's also got a really nice drive as well, which works well in combination with the filter to give you some interesting and crunchy textures. It's also the only pedal in this comparison with CV in and out options. So if you're a modular person, it might be just right for you. Old Blood Noise Endeavors Float. This is a dual left, right filter pedal, which gives you tons of control over your filter LFO, very hands-on, no menu diving involved. Empress Para EQ Mark II. Possibly, in my opinion, the juiciest pedal board EQ in the bunch. Quite precise, and what I especially like about it is that it forces you to use your ears rather than rely on visuals for your EQ. We all know visuals can be useful as well. The only downside is that you need two of these for a stereo image. GFI System Enigma. Contrary to the Para EQ, it gives you the clearest visual of your EQ in the bunch. Also, tons of presets to choose from. 
different types of EQ. It's also a stereo expander. The only thing is that with so much information packed into a small pedal, you're bound to be menu diving, which may or may not be for you. Source Audio EQ2, arguably one of the most standard EQ pedals of the bunch, but in a much smaller size. Again, you have sufficient control over frequency, Q and everything else you would need for an effects board EQ pedal. And finally, Boss EQ 200. Definitely compared to the Enigma, you're not getting quite as clear of a visual, but you still have more or less just as much control. You're also getting this hands-on section here with all of these bands to work with. And also some clever audio routing if you'd like to re-EQ any given signal more than once. That is my filter review and just comparison of these pedals in general. Hopefully this video helped you out in some way and pointed you in the right direction. Lots of affiliate links for all of the gear mentioned in this video if you'd like to check that out. Please use those links, it helps this channel a lot. Like, subscribe, leave some comments in the comment section. Thanks for being here guys and hope to see you soon.